Welcome to Grandad Reviews. Today I want to take another a look at Fuji X Acquire. Now this is a tethering software supplied by Fuji. It's a free download and it allows you to tether your Fuji X camera. I've got a compatibility chart to show you which ones. And it allows you to attach your camera to your PC for various reasons. But what I want to look at this time because I've done PC connections to your Fuji cameras before in a previous video, I'll put a link to it here. I just want to concentrate on tethering into your image editing software. Now, if you've got Capture One, the full program, then you've got full camera tethering for your Fuji X camera, and you can change the settings, do all kinds of things with it. But if you haven't got that, and you've either got a basic Lightroom, package or you just got an old Lightroom or if you've got any other imaging editing software that allows you to monitor a folder and auto import from that folder as soon as an image appears there then Fuji X Acquire will help you do that. So I just want to go through that, how it's set up so that we can see how it works. So we'll use my X-T3 so let's get onto the computer. So we've got the X-T3 here behind me on the, on the desk. So I've just got it aimed at a, another camera. So that's going to be my subject. Uh, so first, first thing I want to say is make sure you get a good quality USB-C cable. Some are just very good at charging, but they're not very good with data. So try and pick one up that says a, a data cable because I've had loads of problems with cheaper USB cables that haven't transmitted the data properly. I get a good one. This is the one that came with my uh, Google phone. This is quite good. So the first thing we need to do is go to this website, which is at fuji-x.com. I'll put the link to it in the comments below and you'll come to the Fuji X Acquire uh, website. You can click on the compatibility and the user guide on here as well. But we're on version 1.16 at the moment. It just go down, tells you how to install it and to download it. Once you've downloaded and installed Fuji X Acquire, what you'll get is a shortcut. I probably come on your desktop or it'll be in your Fuji X Acquire there. Now, what a lot of people get a problem with is that I'll start it up and nothing really appears to happen. And what it's done is placed itself down at the bottom of your screen. And if you hover over it, it will say no camera. So if we right click on it, first off we want to do is specify a destination folder. So we'll click on that and it will bring up a folder of where you want to actually have your images go to. And what I've done is I've created a new folder and I've called it tethered. So I'll click on that and go OK. Right click on it again, just go to preferences. And in here, we've got exactly what it says, specify the file formats, formats to be transferred to your PC. I've got my XT3 set just to take RAWs, so I'm just ticking RAW. But if you've got RAW and JPEG, or you're taking just JPEGs, that's what you're going to download. If you haven't, if I'm shooting just JPEGs and I've ticked RAW, nothing's going to come through. Now you can save it into a subfolder, of the same name as the card that's on the camera. I've never bothered doing that, I'll just leave it as it is. And then specify a file format to be saved onto the memory card in the camera. So when we set the camera up, we'll set it into one of two settings. And let me just show you those. So on the camera, we'll go into settings to the spanner. 
connection settings and down to connection mode you'll probably find it's on USB card reader as standard and then you've got USB tether shooting auto and fixed now USB tether shooting auto means that when you take the photo the image will be recorded to the memory card and sent to the computer if you're on fixed It'll just send it to the computer, it won't put it onto the memory card. Now there is wireless tether shooting as well. Um, I don't honestly bother with that because it is extremely slow. So what we're going to put it on is USB tether shooting auto. And come out of that. So that's that part. Camera search. If you're going to put it to wireless and put it onto network, but we're just doing USB. And then you've got linked software, so you can link a software to open up with the images and to work on them. We're not going to change that. So just on file type. So click OK. Go back to it again. And this time we're going to go show window. And this is the window that shows you the, whether the camera's connected and what settings it's running at. So we get a USB cable, plug it into the computer. And plug it into the camera. It'll take its little while. So it's come up, it's found my XT3, it knows what the shutter speed is, the aperture they've set, the ISO, whether I've got any exposure compensation, and what the white balance is. So everything now is set up on there. So if I go to that folder, tethered, and if I take a photo, you'll see the bar, it'll come up. On this screen here and then it'll appear in this folder and there it is so we've got the image from the camera onto the computer I'll just delete this one now I'm going to Lightroom and I'm just using Lightroom because that's what I've got on on here move this out of the way now if you're using a different software that you can still monitor a folder then it'll be different to this but we just go to file auto import not tethered capture this only supports certain cameras or if you've brought the plug-in for it for a Fuji camera from the Fuji website we want to go into auto import and we'll go to in auto import settings so this is the important bit the watched folder so when we go choose we pick that folder we've already done so i've picked the tethered folder then i'll move it it has to move it somewhere so all i've done is moved it to a folder called auto import and then that puts that into a subfolder you don't have to put a subfolder you can put whatever you like how you want to name it so you can put a custom name on each one so if it's a certain session so we could change this to Olympus because that's my camera I'm putting. Starting number zero one, and then we can put a develop setting on it as well. So we could pick preset lens correction. If you want to change it black and white, we won't put anything on there. Don't want to put any meta metadata in it, and the initial previews will leave on minimum. So that's okay go back up to it auto import and enable auto import so now it's looking at that folder so as soon as we take a photo it's going to come along here go to there go into that folder and there it is i'll do that full size put a different camera in there another olympus another shot goes on there see it there and it comes full screen on there so in essence you've got tethered shooting obviously there's some limitations you're going to have to control the camera on the camera uh, there's no controls in Fuji X acquired to actually adjust anything on the camera but if you're in like this particular setting I can easily change any settings on the camera I want to or just leave it in full, full auto and it will do it itself it's not as quick a straight tethering into uh, a proper tethering software so there is a little bit more delay because it has to go through acquire to the folder and then 
whatever editing software has to look at that folder and, and move it across. But as you can see in Lightroom, we can add different settings. So let's try changing that to black and white. And if I go back up to auto import settings, developer settings, so let's do that. Take that shot again, comes up there, flips into there, which is obviously color. Hopefully when it imports, it'll add that black and white to it. And there we go. So I've instantly got it in black and white on screen. So if you wanted to see how that was going to look, we've got that option. What else have we got? So I'm going to put another one of these presets in. Take another shot. Okay, it popped up here first. There we go. It adds the preset to it for us. And then all you need to do is either leave auto import on or just come up here and turn it off if you want to. So that's Fuji Acquire in its most simplest basic setup. I say if you've got other editing software that you use, just check either online or in the menus and see if you've got uh, a folder that can be monitored. And then all you need to do is create that folder that's going to be monitored if you have to create it yourself. If you don't, if the program does it automatically, use that one. And then just point Fuji X Acquire at that folder. Make sure you connect your camera with a good quality USB cable. And away you go. You've got tethering for free, basically. Uh, say so it's not up to the full tethering specs, but it's good enough. Um, I use it sometimes. Uh, for studio work because it is just handy to see it on a bigger screen straight away rather than having to wait to have a look at it. So that's my look at Fuji X Acquire. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified hit that bell button. Till next time see you later.